Hello everyone and welcome to another video here in the channel. Today we have a special video. This is a question that I get asked quite a bit is what graphics tablet or what pen display are you using to create all of my stuff? And I usually work with this one, which is the Huion Canvas 16. However, I got a little surprise for you. Look what just got in the mail. We got a little gift from our friends at Huion and today I'm gonna be reviewing and showing you the Canvas Pro 13 2.5K, which is an improvement open the, uh, like the older versions. It has a better screen, it has better resolution and uh, yeah, we're gonna put it to the test with all of the different softwares that we normally use. So let's go. So this is the first time that I do one of this kind of unboxings. I hope the camera is looking good. And uh, yeah, so this is, as I was mentioning, this is the Campus Pro 13 2.5. And the cool thing about this is that it comes with a QLED screen. You're gonna see that in just a second. And it has a 2.5K resolution. So it's a lot bigger than a normal like 1920 by 1080, which is gonna give you a nicer sort of like result at the end. Um, this is, whoop, sorry about that. This is the tablet right here. Let's open it up real quick. And look at this. This is beautiful, beautiful. Looks very good. It has all of these buttons over here. And the connections, which is something that I do like, let me see if I can show it here on the camera. They're gonna be on the back side now. So instead of having them on this other side, on the previous one, it's now gonna be on this side over here. Uh, it has a six, uh, seven buttons that you can customize. And the screen is supposed to be already protected, so you don't need to add any sort of like covering. It's supposed to be glass, and you shouldn't have any issue when using any of the ads. Let me place this down here for just a second. Let's keep going over here. It comes with a base, very nice vase as well. Similar to the one on the, on the previous model that I showed you on the Canvas 16. I actually like this smaller size. One thing that I've... Uh, I have a little bit of an issue with my, my previous tablet. It's that it is a little bit too big sometimes, especially if you have a limited desk. It can be a little bit difficult to have. Look at this. Nice. So you can see right here, this opens up. And this is what we're going to be using to set up our tablet in just a second. Now, other than that, we, of course, have our pen. So this pen, and this is one of the things that you should always look for when buying a, a tablet, is you want the pen to be with no batteries. I know there are some tablets that require a battery to be used. The cool thing about this ones, the Hoyon ones, is that you don't need that. Let's open this up real quick. I believe it's the same pen that I have on my previous tablet as well. I'm gonna compare that. So this is the new one, this is my old one. Yeah, it seems to be pretty much the same. So it's the 3.0. So that's a good thing. That means if you have a, a previous version, you're gonna be able to um, to just recycle your, your pens or in case you miss it, you're gonna have an extra one. This one's very cool. A lot of people don't know about this. I don't know. It has nibs inside. So you can change the nibs over here. You have the black nibs and, or the traditional like plastic nibs. And these are more like felt nibs. So if you are more used to having that sort of like grit when drawing with paper, especially for people that are doing a lot of painting, that one's very, very cool. I actually still have most of my, my old nibs right here. So I've only used like two or three, I think on my previous one. But the previous one didn't have the felt ones, so, so that's a good addition on this one, having a, a felt tip as well. Over on this side are the cables, and this is very, very, very interesting. I think these are the cables. Check. Okay. Cables, or is it the manual? I think it's the manual. Okay, so yeah, on this side we got the manual. We do get a little cleaning cloth, and I do believe they include a... What's the word? A glove as well. There we go, the glove. I, I was uh, like the old one that I have right here. It's, it's gone through a lot, so new glove, that's nice. Um, now, the cables, this is very, very, very important. Cable-wise, you are gonna have two types of connections. The first type of connection is gonna be the USB-C to USB-C connection, which is this one right here. So if you go to the side of the tablet on this side, you're gonna see that one of this says USB-C and the other one is the lightning bolt port. So when you're connecting to a laptop, for instance, or you're connecting to your phone or your iPad or whatever, you can just connect with the USB-C. Now, if you're connecting to a computer, normally, especially if your computer does not have a USB-C port, you're gonna need a couple more connections. And that's why we have this like big bundle of cables right here. So this big bundle of cables has a USB, which is gonna be the power source, and then you got the HDMI, which is this one right here. And one of the cool things about this new um, tablet is that instead of having a single one, you're actually gonna have two of them right here. So as you can see, it's two connections, just to make a, a nicer fit. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it for the for the unboxing side of things. Let me set everything up and uh, we're gonna start testing it, okay? Let's go. Very well, my friends. So this is the actual review of the tablet and I wanna go over a couple of things, a couple of uh, issues that I found and how I fixed them. It's not really issues, just like technical things that you need to, to be aware of. So let's first talk about the main like tablet right here. As we've mentioned, it has seven buttons that you can program with the little Huion driver. It has the connection right here and there's a power button here on the top. If you press the power button for three seconds, you are going to get this, which are the options, which you can also access on the, on the little software. But this allows me to change the type of image that I want. And as you can see, we get slightly different results depending on the amount of brightness, contrast, and I believe this is like the saturation of the, of the colors. So this is the one that's by default. This is the gaming one, which is a little bit more contrasty, more punchy. This is cinematic, which is a little bit duller. And you can pick, of course, whichever you want. This right here are the temperatures. You can change the temperatures of the element. So you can go really, really like this is neutral, right? This is a little bit uh, lighter and this is uh, kind of warmer. It's a, it, Both of them are a little bit warmer or sorry, cooler than um, than the other ones. The 650 or 65,000 is probably the one that's closer to like a, like a traditional neutral balance. This one is very important. This is the color elements. This tablet, opposed to the other one that I've mentioned before, the, the 16 2021 version, does have a, several like RGB like uh, presets that you can use to see your colors in a better light. Why is this important? Especially if you're going to be doing a lot of illustration or print work, like you're going to be printing, I don't know, cards, posters, banners, and things like that. This will get you a closer, like, like contrast to what you will find in inks and in printing than what we normally do with um, with videos. For myself, for a lot of like the production stuff that I do, it's really not that big of a deal, but it's a nice like little perk to have. So I'm gonna leave it there at native. And of course, over here right now we are in the HDMI connection. We're doing full screen, so the full resolution, and of course a couple of other things that we can do. This is the Type C. In case remember that you are using this with laptop or with a tablet, you can just connect the USB C cable to the top port right here, and you're gonna have a nice result. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, setup because again, this is one of those things that uh, people uh, sometimes struggle with. If you are going to be uh, setting this up, you are gonna have to download the Huion driver and make sure you download the latest version because it's. Um, it will update like uh, some of the things that you that you will need. So let me show it to you real quick. There we go. It's actually, it's already here on the screen. So this is the, the little Huion driver thing that we're going to be using. And here is where you're going to be customizing the area. So as you can see right now, I'm using three monitors, one, two, and this is the third one. And it's really, really big. Why? Because remember, this is a, a 2.5K resolution. It's like a... Like, it's not 4K, right? It's like not, not the highest resolution that you're going to find, but it's a really, really high resolution. So um, it's going to occupy a lot of area. If you want to work with the full resolution and the full area of your screen, you need to set this up as an extended monitor. And this is what I want to show you right here. In Windows, you're going to be using this element right here. And on your display settings, you want to make sure that this is set up as a third extended display. Normally, when I'm recording, I actually mirror the second monitor and my tablet. So if you do that, what's going to happen is that, and I'm gonna, actually going to do it right now, go here, let's extend this on one and two. What's going to happen is you are going to be able to, to work normally, okay? But you do need to make a change because in, in my personal setup, my main monitor is a 1920 by 1080. It's full HD monitor. So my main monitor does not manage to get to the full resolution of the tablet. Therefore, the, the tablet's not going to be able to use the full resolution either. It's going to look way crispier and it's going to look very nice in, in still, but you're not using like the full, full resolution. You need to change here on the working area that you only want to work on the um, screen ratio right here. And in this case, I want to do this. I'm going to click on this uh, icon right here so that it's only on the main screen that I'm going to be working with. And it's very important that we do a screen ratio. You're going to see two little bands right here on the, on the little display that says that those areas of your tablet are no longer going to be active. And that should give you a proper calibration. Again, important to do. A uh, quick reminder, you can rotate the tablet. So if you don't like having the connections right here and you want to have them on the other side because your desktop is on the other side, you can just rotate the tablet and click any of these buttons right here. You can even have vertical if you want. Uh, on the pan side of things, you can change the elements right here, the, um, the, middle mouse, uh, the middle mouse button and the right button, which again is very, very cool. And uh, very importantly, if you have a heavy hand or if you have a very like soft hand and you are feeling that the pressure is not working, you can customize. I normally don't tweak these things too much, to be honest, but it is an option and it's a nice option to have so that you can um, make sure that it works the best possible way. I have been using the sort of like felt nib right here, which is included with the little um, nib things that I told you. And it's really good. It's I, I feel like it, it like works very, very nicely. 
So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, just again, a quick reminder, if you are connecting this as a display and you want to have the full resolution available, you need to connect it to the HDMI of your computer, of your main graphics card. You should not connect it to a DP adapter, which I did at first and I couldn't get the 2.5K resolution. So it needs to go directly from HDMI to the HDMI port of your graphics cards. And then you connect everything else into, into another port or something. So yeah, now let's jump into the into the actual elements. And uh, of course, the, the first things that I try when I'm, I'm doing this is the sensitivity, right? Like how soft, like here, I'm barely, barely touching the tablet. And you can see that I'm already like adding a little bit of volume here. I'm gonna make the color a little bit darker so that you can see a little bit better there on the screen. There we go. And um, yeah, it just works very, very nice. I'm gonna go with a Damien standard here. Let me give it a subdivision level. And this is the kind of stuff that, for instance, let's say we're working on, on the lips. Like you really want to have a lot of control over the intensity of the of the strokes that you're going to be adding here, as you can see right there. Very very nice. Like to be honest, like there's not much I can say about the resolution or the or the like the smoothness of the stroke. I've been using Huion tablets for a couple of years now, and they've never disappointed. So I'm I'm really happy to see that this one behaves exactly as I'm expected. Um, this is a very like neat picky thing, and this is something that uh, some of my friends. It's one of those sort of like a fur first world problems. Like if you're like, damn, like I wish this was a little bit different. But in my, um, I can actually show you. But in my in my uh, tablet, I do have a pen as well for my tablet. And what happens is the tablet usually has the glass. So when you click on the tablet, you feel how the glass punches and then touches the the screen. So you hear this sort of like clicky sound, like click 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 every time you you tap. In this case, that's not happening because the, the, the eh, because this is a laminated screen so you get like a like a super super soft response and it's pretty much like this is probably with the felt nib and the, and the size this is as close as i've been to to being able to draw like on a on a piece of paper now there was an issue a couple of years ago but fortunately they have fixed it which was that if you were working on multiple softwares in this case i'm going to be opening a photoshop the pressure sensitivity would like mess up and it would work on one software but it would not work on the on the other one so let me show you here real quick and I open, uh, oh no, let's, let's open, let's render. So if I wanna like draw or do whatever, this character right here, you can see right now the, the, like, the pressure sensitivity is working very nicely. Right now this is a round brush and it has only the, the opacity as the pen sensitivity. So I can control how, like, how much color or how much uh, opacity is going depending on the pressure. If I go very, very lightly, you can see that it goes really, really light. Like I can really control that. And of course, if you go to your uh, brushes menu, quick, I can go brush settings. And if you've never used Photoshop and you want to learn a little bit about it, uh, you can go to the shape dynamics. And on the size jitter, you can change this to pen pressure. And that's going to give you this sort of like taper. So again, now, since I have both uh, shape and uh, color, if I go very, very smooth, it's going to be a very, very thin line. If I go very, very heavy, it's going to be a dark and uh, thick line. So again, depending on how you calibrate this, you're going to get a nice, nice effect. And uh, yeah, I mean, so far I've been testing this uh, tablet with um, with ZBrush, with um, Blender, with 3D Code, with Photoshop, with Substance Painter, and in every single software that I've tried it out, it's been performing very, very, very well. Um, as you can see now, we're back into ZBrush, and again, pressure is working exactly as expected. So you can have multiple softwares um, open, and they will behave like very, very nicely. Another thing that's important. Oh, there we go. Another thing that's important is here on the display, if you go to the to the press keys, you can actually set this press keys per program. So if you go all the way up here to the programs options, you can add a specific program and these shortcuts will work for, I don't know, your brushes in Blender, maybe some modes or modifiers. Like you can calibrate this um, however you want. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I, I don't want to make this like super, super long. Um, again, I've been using this for the past like a week and like pretty, pretty consistently. And I have not had a single issue so far. If you have any questions or if you want me to, to give you a specific information about the tablet, please, please let me know. I'm just going to leave, but I'm going to go full screen for this. I'm just going to leave you one final thing that I think it's important to know about the USB-C cable. So one last thing, and this is for those of you that are going to be on the go. One thing that I understand, but at the same time, I wish it could change a little bit, is the length of the USB-C cable here. 
But this one right here is roughly like one meter like high, like cable. This is a different cable. And that's the size that you're gonna get for your USB cable inside of the package. Is it the worst thing ever? No, I mean, usually your tablet is gonna be really close to your computer, but I have a personal issue with my laptop where I normally want, like to have my tablet on the, on the right side and my laptop on the left side. And the USB-C port of the laptop is on the left side. So it needs to go all the way across. And sometimes the distance is just not working properly. Now, thankfully, there is a solution. If you want, you can get a new USB-C cable from the internet that's a little bit longer, but it's very, very important. This is fundamental. I wanted to keep this on the video because this is something that I had an issue with my past tablet. The USB-C cable has to be a Thunderbolt cable, okay? They're usually known as Thunderbolt cables, which are the cables that only that transmit data, image, and energy, okay? You're gonna, you're gonna see that they're Thunderbolt because they're gonna, gonna be a little bit more expensive, like $20, $40, depending on where you are but you will get a, a cable that already needs to comply with the specific like format. You can go onto the Huion stuff and or into the Huion documentation, you're gonna find specifically what kind of cable you need. But as long as it's a Thunderbolt and it's transmitting like information of like 60 gigabytes, it should be fine. So final words, is this tablet worth it? Yes, I think if you don't have a tablet and you're looking to get into the pen display, this is an excellent, excellent entry-level tablet. The price is very affordable compared to other like competitors in the market. And I think that, again, the 2.5K resolution, the size, the felt nibs, and all of the like accommodations that you have with this tablet are going to make it a very, very like cool and useful tool for your arsenal as a 3D artist. If you have, again, more questions or you want to like know a little bit more about the tablet, let me know. I'm also going to be using this from now on on my streams. So if you want to ask during the streams or during one of my videos, feel free to ask about it, and I'm going to be more than happy to help you out. If you want to check this tablet or any other tablet, I'm going to link, uh, leave a link down here on the description so that you can check the full like Huion catalog and um, yeah, so you can get yourself a new tablet if that's what you're looking for. Again, thank you very much, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one.